I uh, last year had a chance to guest speak at Tiger 21. It's the most, one of the top elite networking groups in the world for most affluent people in the world. And I phoned one of the guys on the Forbes 400 list, he's a billionaire, known quite well. And I said to him, I said, I'm going to present in front of some people who are the most wealthiest affluent people on the planet. And I'm excited and I'm scared. What, what, what do I ask them? How do, how do I engage in conversation with people at this level? And, and this is the guy on the Forbes 400 list. This is what he said to me. He said, when you ever meet a person who's best in class or a person of influence, ask him this question. You want to write this down. How did you know when you were different? Or when did you know that you were different? How many of you sort of have done something remarkable, amazing in your life, and you knew a time in your life when you were a kid or junior high school or an adult, that there's a certain thing that happened in your moment, a specific event that you know that you were different than the rest of the people in your family or people in your school, or your church, your charity? How many of you can write this? You knew there was a significant time when you were different. For me, it was in June of 1995. A guy by the name of Perry Katina, maybe in the financial industry you might know Perry Katina, Guy brought me up on stage in Vernon, BC. He handed me a bag full of a bunch of investors group financial services swag. And I went home. And there was a check for $50 in that bag. And he believed, that company believed more in me than I believed in myself. I've been paid as high as $25,000 in three hours for speaking with some corporations. And that, that has no impact on me to the $50, right? I did some work with a company, I won't mention the name because of a non-disclosure agreement, but I did some work with a company a few years ago in the oil patch in Western Canada here. And they paid me $20,000 to come in to do some training for their organization. And I'll tell you a true story, I haven't told many people this. I'm living in Kelowna, BC, I'm in a mastermind group. And uh, <laughs> so I was charging three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 to go do corporate training. It was, out of my, it was scary. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to earn $10,000 speaking sometime? And so I'm in my mastermind group of some people who always intimidated me. Because I always thought if I'm going to join a group, they'll always be better playing at a higher level than me. So I have to level up. Does that make sense? So I always join a group where, so if you're uncomfortable being here tonight, you're in the right group. These people intimidate you, make you say, I have no idea. I'm scared to introduce myself. You're in the right group. Because a year from now, you'll be a different person. Does that make sense? Because you're going to go to the next level. And so I went to these people, and I was scared. And I said, I, I want to learn how to ask to get $10,000. And I'm just going to be straight up with you and tell you what I did. I actually, the guy told me in my room, this room who was, who was making that kind of money, he says, he says, the next time you are on the phone with a, a decision maker of a corporation and you're going to tell them what your professional fees are, you're going to reach down with your right hand and start grabbing your balls <laughs> and start squeezing. It's called pain or pleasure. And you're going you're gonna to start talking on the phone and tell them $10,000 and you just keep squeezing to a point where you're going to pass out. He says, you do it. No matter what it takes, you do it. You commit. So I, this company phoned me, and I started doing that, and it, for real. And I was to a point where I was going to pass, like, I thought I was going to pass out. I said $10,000. Now, what's the point of the story? Four months later, I go train this company. We're in Golden, British Columbia at the Quantum Leaps Lodge, just as you go into Golden on the Trans-Canada Highway. I'm training this company, training their executives, senior vice presidents, management. And we leave at the end of the day of the training. And the guy who was the head guy that brought me in just smoked, and he was a redneck kind of guy from northern Alberta. And he says, I need to talk to you. We need to go for a walk down by the river. <laughs> OK. So we're walking down by the river, just outside of Golden in the Canadian Rockies. And he says, I got a question to ask you. When I asked you four months ago when I phoned you up and I asked you how much for a day of corporate training, why did you tell me uh, $10,000? And I said, no, I said, well, I was scared, right? I was like, oh my gosh. And uh, I said, well, you know, I, I said, I just felt that I, I, I deserved that kind of fee for training your company because I trained your company before. And he goes to me, he says, you know what, son? He says, I, I got to teach you something. He says, you, you have a powerful day today training my organization. But he said, when someone asks you how much are you, how much are you worth, how much you want to pay, you say, what are you willing to pay me? He said, I agreed to pay you $25,000 a day was my budget. And you told me $10,000. And I was scared to ask for it. He had a different vision. So when you, why am I telling you this? Because you're going to go see clients this week or customers thinking, oh my gosh, how do, I, how do I sell my services? You're a brand new business owner. Right? He's, a very, he's a very unique business. They can make a huge difference in this city. 
Say, say what your title is. Company? Yeah, say what your title is, what you do. Green renovation. And, wh and what's your background? You're a scientist in what? Building scientist and a renovator. He's a building scientist. How many have heard of building scientist? <laughs> Different, right? He's a building scientist. So the thing is, is that he's going to go up there and say, how do I price my fees? Because I don't have a lot of comparables in the marketplace. There's not a lot of building scientists. How many of you have ever met a building scientist? Small percent, niche market specialist. So the thing is, is that you're going to go out there and say, what do I charge for my services? And you're going to be scared. Does that make sense? And you have no idea what the person on the other side sees in value in you. And it was a huge turning point in my life that so many people believe in you, make sure you're one of them. One of the things that I've learned in my life, and I want to encourage you to do this, if you want to achieve a goal, so one of the things that I wanted to do when Dan introduced me earlier today is that I used to go when I was living in Vernon back in the 1990s. I didn't have much going for myself. And what I would do is I would go at nighttime at the Staples in Vernon and the Overweighty. And I would go into the dumpsters at nighttime. And I would take the Kellogg's Corn Flakes boxes. And I would go with an X-Acto knife and I would cut out the Kellogg's Corn Flake box logos at Kellogg's. And I would go into Staples, into the recycling dumpsters behind the store at nighttime when they were closed. And I would take the boxes that said Microsoft and Intel and Apple. I'd take these logos and I'd cut them out. And I would go back to my, where I was living and I'd paste them up on the wall. Did that. Didn't know how I was going to do it. Didn't know when it was going to happen. Didn't know how I was capable of it. was good enough, smart enough, well enough. And I would do that. And I would sit down and I would, I would take out a piece of paper and I'd write down number 200 and I thought I have to convince myself that I'm worthy of training these corporations. I have nothing going for me. I have no formal education. How am I going to provide massive value to this large Fortune 100 company? I'm a nobody. I'm a kid who grew up in a small town in Surfcourt, Saskatchewan who was labeled most likely not to ever succeed, never go far in my life. Right? Nobody ever believed in me that I thought. That was my mindset. I have to build the confidence and the strength inside myself right now to, to sell myself that I can go and do this. I don't know how it's going to happen. And I would spend some time, and I would start at number 200, and I'd write down 200 reasons why I'm good enough, smart enough, worthy enough, deserving enough, valuable enough to go in and train that company. And as of last year, I've now trained 150 seven Fortune 100 companies in the world. And people ask you, how did you do it? I went back and I had to sell myself. Because I could, I could get somebody to do a proposal, or I could do a proposal from there. But I had to sell myself that I could do it. I had to build the belief inside myself that I could do it. 